Hey guys, what's up? It's Emergency and welcome or welcome back to our channel. Today we're talking about a show that you guys actually recommended to me and I watched and if you can tell anything by the title, I truly honestly wasn't that big of a fan. And that show is Grand Army. Now while I do have some strong opinions about this show, I will try and keep it fair or well, fair enough in my review synopsis and critique of the show just because I feel like there are some good aspects of the show that I did find myself enjoying or at least tolerating. While there were definitely a bunch of things that were deeply problematic and I won't want to get into it. But before we do that, if you're new to the channel, then hit that subscribe button and also leave a like on this video because that helps out a lot. And we're on the road to 40K subscribers, so it would mean even more. Oh, and also before we get into Grand Army, let me tell you a little bit about this video sponsor, Curology. People always ask me both in the comments and in real life how I keep my skin so clear. And first of all, let's say thank you. I, I like that you think I, I my skin is clear, but it's all thanks to Curology. And what is Curology, you may be asking? Curology is a three-step skincare plan for basically anybody that really wants to get into skincare but doesn't really know how. It is basically, in my opinion, one of the easiest ways to get into skincare and to keep up a realistic and convenient skincare regimen. I've been using Curology for about almost a year now and I have not regretted it once. Before I started Curology, I used to try a bunch of different things online, a bunch of different methods, trying to mission mash a bunch of skincare stuff together to see if it would work for my face, not really knowing exactly what my skin needed. Curology really simplifies that process because literally all you need to do is go on their website, fill out their quick quiz just to get an assessment of your skin, and you'll get put in touch with one of their dermatology providers who will help you put together a formula made specifically for your skin so that you can hopefully see personalized results. And then after you finish figuring out what would be best for you, they send you these three lovely products products, the cleanser, the moisturizer, and then your personalized custom formula. What I really love about Curology is that it makes skincare so easy. It is literally just those three things. You just put on the cleanser and the moisturizer during the day, and then you throw in your custom formula at night, and that is literally it. I'm gonna be honest, I've never really been someone who's had like intense acne just because of my genetics. But one thing that I did suffer from a lot was discoloration in my skin, as well as some cystic acne on my nose. I can happily say after taking Curology that both of those things have cleared up and I really haven't had any problems with my skin since. Especially for my guys out there that are kind of nervous about getting into skincare, this is for you. And I've partnered with Curology to get you guys the hookup. You can click the link in my description right now to get a free trial of Curology. So you can basically go and test it out, see if it works for you. All you gotta do is pay a little $5 for shipping and handling and you can get some skincare, glowy skin for the price of a cup of coffee. Thank you so much Curology for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into talking about Grand Army. Grand Army is basically your run of the mill Netflix high school coming of age dramas that happens to take place in a public school in New York City. So that's sort of the spin on that. The show starts off being actually surprisingly triggering. I don't usually use that word too often, but if you've seen the show and you see the first episode, you kind of know why. Just for some reason, actually I know exactly why, just because going to school in America. The topics and themes that they address in that first episode really resonated with me just because of experiences that I've been through and that I've heard of and just like collective student drama. It was just like a lot for the first episode, especially when we weren't sure which characters were safe, which characters weren't safe. It was just a lot. But that event in particular was what basically kicked off every one of the characters stories for this season. So the story revolves around five main characters and it jumps between each of the five to tell each of their own individual stories. And of course, there's a bunch of surrounding characters, which kind of get a little bit of development. Yeah, I'll say that. There is Dom, who's a basketball player and aspiring psychologist living and struggling through a single parent home, basically struggling throughout the show to make ends meet. She really never gets to be a child or a kid or a teen, really. She constantly has to be providing, working, and supporting her family. The only people in her family that are making money are her mom, who's already working 90 hour weeks, and her older sister, who eventually in the show gets injured and is unable to work. So she has to actually step up into that role and be a high schooler, a parent, basically, to her younger siblings, and then also an employee, among all the other roles that she has to really deal with as a growing high school student. Then the next character we have is Joey. In Joey, she's just this really big personality who at the beginning of the series is just very into women empowerment and I think a lot of other issues, but a lot of these things sort of fall under like the performative activism 
sort of thing. And in the later half of the series, quick trigger warning, her character actually does a whole 180 after she experiences SA at the hands of her friends. And at that point, she's pretty much broken and is trying to build herself back up after that. Next character is Sid. And Sid is your typical, like, perfect high school student. He's super smart in applying to Ivy Leagues. He's really good at swimming. He has, like, a group of, like, bros and a girlfriend to boot. So he's really living the American teen high school fantasy. But then you find out that he's actually, and that sends his whole world for a spin, amongst many other things. Then we have Layla, who is, how do I describe Layla? Kindly. The best way I can quickly describe Layla is she really fits like the insecure freshman trope, where she just really wants to be important and like in the in crowd, but also at the same time is one of those people that definitely would not be in the in crowd. Just one of those like, active observers where she like watches the popular kids and tries to emulate them but will never be in their circle. Whoa, we'll, we'll get into Layla. I'll just say right off the bat that she deserves jail time. She needs to be locked up. Then finally the last character I feel is like one of the more minor main characters is Jay. And Jay's whole story kind of starts at the beginning of the first episode where he gets in trouble for stealing Dom's purse with his best friend and basically loses her wallet and her money and then has to basically go through a bunch of disciplinary actions. He ends up getting suspended. His friend ends up getting like a superintendent suspension, which is basically for like, like 60 days. And his whole arc is really trying to navigate being like a good friend and living with guilt of like really screwing his friend over constantly. He's like one of those people that will constantly screw you over and ruin your life, but do it with a smile and the best intentions, which I feel like is worse than someone that's playing on your downfall because there's honestly nothing you can really say without you sounding like the bad guy. But yeah, that's basically like the main cast. That catches you up to speed with basically everything you need to know for what I'm about to say. But with all that said, I really don't like any of these characters. Grand Army, in my opinion, is one of those shows. I'm not sure if it's just like recent shows because it was a similar theme with Ginny and Georgia, but with Ginny and Georgia, I had like some people that I liked. At least I had Joe. I had Joe that I liked. But for Grand Army, I really just did not like any of these characters. I didn't like the main characters. I didn't like the side characters. And I feel like the main reason behind that is that they just all are not good people with the exception of Dom. You know what, Dom is my Joe. Dom for me is the Joe of Grand Army just because she really is trying her best. She's trying to mind her own business. She's not in everyone else's business. Well, she is in Joey's business for one point, but for the most part, she has good intentions and she's minding her own business, really just trying to live her own life. But for everybody else, they just are not good people. And I get it, no one in high school is a good person. Or let me rephrase, most high schoolers are not good people at that time because there isn't enough character development there to really have them be good people. Heck, even some college people don't know how to be like good people yet, but the amount of times in this show where I, I'm not like this. I'm not a violent person. I'm not someone who actively goes out and applies commentary to TV shows while I'm watching. But for this show, I don't think I've ever like yelled at a screen as much or really ever. It literally got to the point where my face while I was watching the show was actually stuck like this just because I was so disgusted and angry at every single character in this show. And let's get into it first of all. Everyone in this show is so mean and backstabby. Like everyone is just so snaky for no reason. And I think it's because they all have like that, I'm the main character complex and everyone cares about me. Like Sid, when you're given the option to be your own person and actually be nice to a new friend that you meet, when you actually see that they're physically struggling, no. What do you do instead of like actually being a decent person? You sign them up on this really derogatory list, basically ranking the girls at their high school. And that just sets off Layla's whole character arc of just being so, self-absorbed and i get where like it's coming from because of like trauma and stuff like that the stuff she had to deal with but she really just does not care about anyone but herself and that dang white boy it's just like so toxic and she gets so toxic she like drives away all of her closest friends and uh, can we talk about can we talk about that little book that she made basically she made a book because at a certain point she actually got like some form of self-awareness and realized that she actually is not a good person and needs to like go on this apology train to all these people, but she makes a book and she goes and tries to apologize to different people in some of the most insensitive and inconvenient ways. Like literally her best friend broke off their friendship because she was being so self-absorbed and not paying attention to the best friend's needs. So what does she do to apologize? She starts off well. She's talking about all these things. Like I've realized where things have gone wrong. I can see how we sort of had a disconnect, 
but then like goes and like puts all the blame on the best friend being like you were never really there for me and i feel like that's why i lashed out like like she was complaining about this boy to her best friend at her best friend's family's bat mitzvah and that's just like the tip of the iceberg and then joey the main thing with joey for me that left a really bad taste in my mouth was the whole movie scene. It's literally just the fact that they were being so loud and so disruptive during the movie. And that just really irks me because I have been on both sides of that. I've been like the high schooler with a noisy group of friends in the movie theater and I always feel bad about it. And then I've also been the person who's been in the movie theater with the noisy high schoolers and I just hate it. So there's just something within me, I don't know if it's like my inner Karen or something, that just gets infuriated that they're like screaming and making all this noise and jumping around and bobbing around. Like, ugh, it was the hijinks. I can't deal with the hijinks. I really just can't deal with the hijinks. But basically my point is that none of these characters are likable. Like literally some of them are actual felons. And like at one point, spoiler alert, I'm sorry, but like Layla like calls in a threat at school just for the sake, this is the icing on the cake for me. You remember after I just told you that she had a failed apology campaign? After that, you know what she did? She thought in her brain of hers, you know what brought me and my best friend close to the first time? Trauma. So let me induce trauma on the entire school during a protest. Like protesting like the zero tolerance policy, which disproportionately affects like the black students on that school. Like, okay, cool, valid reason. She calls in a threat at the school to try and rekindle her friendship with Bestie. Just because Bestie was scared for her life again. So like, and now let's actually get into stuff that actually matters. Let's talk about some pros and cons of the show because you know, we gotta do that eventually, right? So a short list of things that I think this show actually did well. I feel like their themes of friendship, specifically I would say for the people of color in this show were very good. Just because you don't often see in shows a bunch of people of color just hanging out and being friends and have genuinely healthy friendships without there being like some kind of traumatic thing that happens to one of them or there being like a giant like hate crime, I guess, against them. And I feel like this show did that pretty well. Like, like especially with Dom and her friends, like it was generally just wholesome vibes the whole time. Like, of course there are like ups and downs of the friendship, but that was just a really good example and really good representation, I feel like, of a black friend group and specifically like a black girl friend group. It was wholesome vibes, good vibes all the time. Change my statement for characters that I actually like and I feel like it's Dom and all of her friends. Like they were just good vibes whenever they were on the screen. I also feel like Sid's sibling relationship with his sister was also really good, just because I feel like they had such a tight bond and they kind of were able to come together and heal and understand each other and bond together over their mutual shared experience with their parents who were like super strict and like hard on them. Then they were constantly like defending and protecting each other but also holding each other accountable, which I feel like was just like nice, you know? Now let's get into one of my major gripes with the show and I've been like trash talking the show this whole time. Just how they like deal with like casual racism like throughout the entire show the white kids that sid is hanging out with constantly just call him a bunch of derogatory things we'll call him literally anything in the book but his name and just see him as sort of like the token but then also want to go in and say like oh we're not racist like your actions and your words just don't really add up per se just because it's really given like heavy microaggression, diving into maybe a little bit of macroaggression <laughs> at that point. But the show also has this theme for the people of color in the show of like pushing the whole model minority theme because it really just seems like a conflict of like the traditional viewpoint of like the parents and like the elders and then sort of like the newer point of view from like the students and high schoolers because throughout the show, parents and adults are constantly saying, be like respectable, make sure that you keep your head down and like try and be your best, put your best foot forward so that you don't fall into like your stereotype or you don't give people a reason to like not like you. And this scene for both like Sid and his family after the attacks happen on the city. And then also again for Jay after he has his whole disciplinary actions, trying to like rebuild himself, especially near the end where He's kind of at like a crossroads where he feels like he should be doing something right to speak up for his friend. But at the same time, his parents are pressuring him to just like go with the flow, be respectable so that he can like get the opportunity for what it was and sort of avoid really like stirring the pot. And I feel like this was interesting, but they didn't really give it as much time as they really could, which I mean, like I don't necessarily blame them for. The show really did try to tackle every issue in the book in the span of nine episodes. Like literally, if you can think of any pressing hot topic issue or anything really controversial, I think pretty much ever this show has it. It really just stuffs everything in there and doesn't really like fully address anything because it's really trying to like fit it all and address it all, all within like a nine hour season, which for obvious reasons would not work. <laughs> but that is something that I wish they would flesh out more and talk about more, which leads to one of the last things I wanna talk about 
which was the finale, which was so weird. So first off, we finally figure out what the little before and end credits um, really mean because at the beginning and end of every episode you just see like words being typed on like a Google Doc and you're not really sure what they're about because they're like super edgy and like super cringy and of course the person who's writing them is Layla who uses all of that text as like the threat to like rekindle her thing with her bestie which was anticlimactic because I thought it was gonna be something like really profound but really wasn't but like at the very end this show just ends off with a long period of silence of Jay just standing up at his performance with his like I can't breathe tape over his mouth and just holding his fist up to make a statement but it just like ends there and I feel like they were trying to go for like the whole like ooh this is like mysterious this is like setting up for like a second season if they're going that route but for me it just kind of seemed like unfinished like it wasn't giving what it was supposed to give because like I feel like there were like other storylines of other people that still weren't finished for the season like things weren't tied up for the season, like even like if they were doing a cliffhanger, they usually like tie things up enough. It just sort of feels like this is going to be like another cut, like there was supposed to be another 10 minutes, but they just kind of stopped. Like it just was not an impactful ending for me. And if you've been watching my reviews, you know that like finales are kind of important to me because they're just like what you walk away with, what you take away with, whether you're gonna go for like the next season or not. But I digress, I'm not I'm not like a professional critic or anything. These are just my opinions and how I felt while watching the show. Thank you guys for recommending it to me and thank you for watching this video. If you are new to the channel, then hit that subscribe button, leave a like and turn on post notifications so that you never miss an upload. All of those things help off the channel a bunch. You can follow me on all my social medias here at Emergency and you can catch me on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Also make sure to check the link in my description to join our Discord. We have a community Discord here where we have the best vibes and we're growing actually a lot so don't miss out thank you again to curology for sponsoring this video thank you so so much for watching i've been emergency and i'll see you in the next video peace